Welcome to this special edition of Tour Tuesday, everyone. It's so good to see you all. Thank you so much for coming and for turning on your cameras so we can see your faces. Um, like this is going to go down in history uh, for the most people on video. And then within yes. each um, screen, there's lots of couples or um, siblings or, you know, multiple people and uh, uh, multi-generations <clears throat> even. So um, it's great to see you all. Thank you for joining us on this special edition, this extra, if you will, Tour Tuesday. I'm Sandy Borowski and I'm your co-host for tonight. Um, and I have, I, I brought with me <laughs> Jean Gray. Yay. Hi, Jean. Hi. <laughs> Who lots of you know, um, Jean is our uh, cross country tour director extraordinaire. Um, how many cross countries have you escorted, Jean? Uh, six, and this will be number seven in a row. Lucky number seven. Um amazing amazing you guys could not ask for a better person um to be a tour director on this trip and to be with us today uh to talk about our wonderful cross-country trip um we have some star staff on the call today i we have sandy galucci say hi sandy um this is the other sandy in the office um sandy's one of our travel uh our travel advisors and Samantha, where are you, Samantha Kelly? I think she, uh, you might, oh, there she is on her iPhone. Hi. Hi. <laughs> there she is. Um, so thank you guys so much for joining. Um, I have a quick poll to get us started, um, just to see who's here and, and, and why you're here. So um, you can see the questions right there, but um, tell me if you've previously taken a cross country trip, um, if you're booked to travel on a cross country trip, um, or if you're just here to learn more about cross country trips. And if you answer, I'm not sure why I'm here. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make it worth your while. We promise. We promise. Uh, let's, oh my God, Jean, we're up to 76 attendees. That's amazing. Right. Amazing. Great. Um, so let's see just gonna do a little um okay so um we'll do a, a few more seconds of uh letting you guys fill this out i've got a couple more people that are joining in um and then i'll share the results with you okay so here we go um i'm gonna end the poll and i'm gonna share the results Okay, can you see the results? Okay, so uh, nine of you or 15% have taken a cross country trip with STAR. So, um, so glad you're here. We are gonna be counting on the nine of you to give us real life experiences, feedback about our cross country trip. Um, so, so stay alert, <laughs> we're gonna be calling on you. Um, we have 11 of you or 20%, and maybe there's some doubles in the, um, you know, that you're doubled up. So there might even be more. Um, 11 of you are booked to travel on our 2024 cross country trip. So that's awesome. And 50 of you, almost all are here to learn more about our cross country trips. Um, so that's awesome. Um, it's great to know that we've got people that um, have traveled with us cross country, that um, have trust in us and that are going cross country with us this September. And the rest of you are here to learn about our cross country trip. So you are in the right place. You are in the right place. Um, and that's, that's what we're here to talk about. So um, without further ado, uh, because we've got 27 days to get through and uh, our goal is to be done. Um, and we're going to say this to Jean um, with love. Um, our goal is to be done by 815, Jean. Because <laughs> Jean could truly talk about cross country till 815 tomorrow morning. <laughs> Am I right? 
<laughs> yes, you are, but I'll be very good. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I know you will. I know you will. All right. So let's share uh, my screen. Um, and well, first of all, welcome to Tour Tuesday. Um, if I didn't, I think I told you I'm Sandy Borowski, um, your co-host for tonight. I'm the owner of Star Tours, and I'm here with Jean Gray, uh, who has six cross-country tours under his belt, and uh, his seventh will come. So um, our trip this year is a brand new itinerary, um, which by the way, I would, I'm going to quick stop share. Where are Barb and Art? Uh, where are my brother and sister team Barb here? Barb and Art Humac, yeah. There they are. Barb and Art Humac, they're waving. Um, part of, you know, the genesis of this tour um, came from the Humacs. Um, of course, Gene has been talking about doing Route 66 for a long time, but the Humex and Gene um, sort of started brainstorming about a Route 66 uh, themed cross country trip. Um, and here we are today. So you dream it, we build it. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, um, and they were the first to book. <laughs> so we're looking forward to having you guys um, on board and we thank you so much for inspiring this trip. Um, 27 days, like we talked about, um, and, uh, 38 meals. Actually, there's more than 38. We'll talk about that as we go, as we go through, um, you will travel through 17 States. So if you have a bucket list, uh, you will cross off 17 States from your bucket list, which is pretty cool. Um, so you can read the States right there. And by the way, as we're going through this, I want to tell you, first of all, we're going to, uh, as you know, we're recording the zoom and we will be posting it in our library of tour Tuesday. So you will always be able to come back and watch it. Um, if there is a screen that you want to save particularly, particularly take a screenshot, if you know how to, uh, take a picture of it with your phone. <laughs> if you want to. Um, that's that's what these screens are here for. We've made these for you. So you can use this as a future memento if you're going on this this year's trip. Um, Jean, has, Jean will give you something um, to actually have in hand when you board the bus if you're going with us this year. Um, but this is also something digitally that you may wanna save. So um, you will have access to it after tonight. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to the expert here who's going to take us, um, through starting at day one and going up through day 27, um, and, uh, telling you all about what you can expect on this trip. Gene's not going to go into every single detail because we would be here till 8 15 in the morning. Um, but he's going to go through the highlights of the trip. And as, as those of you that have been on the trip before, I know you can attest to, sure, this is what you read on paper, but the experiences that you live um, and, and breathe and go through on the trip are just so, make this exponentially greater than what you see here on the screen. So take it away, Gene. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Great to see everybody here and a great response for tonight. I'm very excited. Um, can you see me? Because I can see me. Can <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, OK. Um, yeah, we can see you. OK, good. Um, first of all, um, the whole idea of the Route 66 trip started for me actually in 2022. And um, I was on a my cross country trip and met another group of people who were here from uh, Europe and they were telling me what a great time they were having on Route 66 and started rattling off some places to which I quickly gathered a piece of paper and a pencil and started jotting things down. And then um, I met with Art and Barbara um, up at a diner near where they live and um, we and Art came through brilliantly with three pages of multicolored ideas, itinerary places, attractions along Route 66 that he did some research on and saw movies on. And so he gave that to me. And so that I used that list, the list that I have, and a few books that I bought along the way and came up with the trip. And I'm really excited to have done it. Um, the first, it's the... Um, 
as the song goes, it starts in Chicago. That's the Route 66 song, of course. It goes from Chicago to L.A., and I'm not going to sing. Um, and and on our on day two of the trip, we're already in Chicago eating lunch at the Chicago Navy Pier. You might eat a hot dog with the garden in Navy Pier. or um, And at night, we're going to be having dinner at Geno's East. And you can try the Chicago deep pan pizza, pizza. Uh, which is featured there. And uh, you see a picture of me jumping out of the 103rd floor of the Willis Tower. I did survive. It's the ledge that we're going up to the top of the Willis Tower. So all that is on day one, uh, on day two uh, of the trip. So we start hitting Chicago and doing many exciting attractions there. Day three, um, we actually begin our trip on Route 66, but first we uh, have a Wendella boat cruise on the Chicago River. It's an architectural cruise with amazing facts about Chicago and uh, also goes into Lake Michigan. And it's really well, um, it, it's, it's well narrated by some very knowledgeable folks. And then we actually um, begin our trip by first going to Adam Street and Michigan Avenue, and we get the picture of the beginning of Route 66. So we'll get our group picture right off the bat. Then we're going to go to lunch at Manny's uh, Deli uh, before we leave Chicago. And um, and that lunch is one of our lunches um, that's included in your package. And then we start off on Route 66. Um, we, you see a picture there of um, the, the Gemini giant. Um, and he uh, he was like he was like a muffler man. It's what he's called. It was originally a muffler man. But this um, one person who owned the uh, very into space, who owned this restaurant, found it at a sale and took off the muffler off his head and put on a space suit. So it's now the uh, Gemini giant. Uh, so we'll be seeing him. And that's the thing about Route 66. It's so quirky. It's so adorable. It's so fantastic. This is Americana at its best, without a doubt. Um, we're also going to be going to, um, the Amber Becker Texaco gas station. It's on the National Registry of Historic Places. And this, and you can see that there. It has the original gas stations from, uh, gas pumps from 1927. And of course, all these places do have gift shops, so really, really, um, you'll be able to get things along the way um we we ride this day we only ride 99 miles out of chicago and we end up in a place called pontiac uh, Illinois, on route 66 for day four um day four is really um it, it's really the beginning of the beginning because it not only has these quirky things like you see the uh, the giant hot dog, it's, it's the um, the Paul Bunyan statue with the hot dog there, but it's also our first museum on Route 66. It's the Illinois Route 66 Association Hall of Fame and Museum, and this gentleman named Bob Winmere uh, is very very. Um, famous for Route 66, and you'll learn a lot more about him on the trip. But he went around Route 66 uh, in the 60s, in the late 50s, early 60s, with his VW bug. And um, there's a lot of cute stories about him, which I'm not going to tell you now. Uh, they, they they do deal with, uh, you know, drugs that at that time were illegal, but are illegal now. But um, I'll tell you more about that on the trip. But uh, Bob Windmere is instrumental, and that museum has a lot of his things that he donated to the museum. 
And Bob Windmere also fixed up other places along Route 66. So he is credited with a lot of things. We'll be eating lunch in many unique places. I already mentioned Manny's Deli. And now we're going to the Dixie Travel Plaza in McLean. Uh, these are, this is a lunch on your own. And it was established in 1928 as a stop along Route 66. And that's what all of our lunch stops are going to be. They're going to be stops along Route 66 of as close to original places that still, as still exist. And, um, and the other picture that you see here, we go into Springfield, Illinois, of course, the land of Lincoln. And that is the, um, uh, the Lincoln split rail statue, the largest covered wagon in history. So um, then we head in, we're going to be staying in Springfield, Illinois, at a hotel called the Drury Inn. Now, for those of you who have not been to a Drury Inn, it's Star's favorite hotel in many ways. First of all, we get to the Drury Inns between 5.30 and 6 at the latest, so everybody can enjoy what's called their kickback, which is two alcoholic drinks per person plus hors d'oeuvre food-style dinner, which is usually substantial to fill up people for dinner. So Sandy mentioned earlier that we do have 38 meals included in this trip. You can add another six jury in kickbacks if you'd like to do that, although you don't have to do the kickback. I always give you a list of hotels near the, I mean, restaurants near the jury in that you could also choose from. But many people do choose those kickbacks. So in all, if you do the six kickbacks, you have 44 meals on this 27 day trip included. Um. Then we go on to uh, day five. And um, you see that quirky ketchup bottle there. Um, these are, the, as I said, these are the kinds of things that you find all along Route 66. We'll be starting the day by going to the Lincoln Presidential Library. Um, so uh, you'll, I've been to uh, quite a few presidential libraries in the past and like um, or Clinton and Nixon, and they are fabulous. So you will learn about life in the 1860s, 1850s in the Lincoln Library. And uh, it, it's really gonna be a fabulous tour. And um, so we'll be there uh, close to two hours uh, touring the library, which I'm sure isn't enough, but that's the time limit that we have. And that's the thing, none of the time is going to be enough for most people. And some people, it'll be too much. <laughs> but that's always the case. On day five, we also um, uh, go along a stretch of road there that you see. Um, it's, uh, it's called Snell Road. It's historic Route 66. It's made of brick laid over cement. And that's that's going to be an example of the original Route 66 and how it was built. That's a small stretch. We will not be doing that the entire 2,000 miles, uh, 2,200 miles, but you'll get a sense about that. That next photo that you see is Doc Soda Fountain, and that's where we're going to be stopping for lunch. Um, in fact, it's another one along Route 66, and it's it has over 600 varieties of, um, of, of uh, that's the wrong one. There's another one that had, never mind, skip that one. Doc Soda Fountain is, um, is a Route 66 diner kind of 50s food, and you should really enjoy that. And of course, we're going to pass by, we're going to be going to Henry's Rabbit Ranch uh, after that, which is um, a ranch where... Um, he actually, and he and his daughter actually raised rabbits. And, you know, rabbits do multiply quite frequently. And so it turned out that there were so many rabbits, they gave most of them away, but they've developed the ranch where the rabbits are supreme. He'll meet us on the bus with a rabbit. And also he has a cute little area that has Volkswagen rabbits. So, um, 
you know, it's a cute place. Uh, so Henry's Rabbit Ranch. And then along the road, you're going to see the largest ketchup bottle. We're going to stop at all these places for 10-minute rest stops. And then we go to the Chain of Rocks Bridge, which is, which is now only a pedestrian bridge. But that used to be the way that the cars in the 20s and 30s got across the mighty Mississippi into St. Louis. And now we're heading from Illinois into Missouri on day six. Um, Sandy, keep me updated on the time, you know, um, I'm looking at my clock and so forth. Yeah, so forth. we're going to want to speed it up a little bit. <laughs> okay, very good. Day six, um, we go to the top of the St. Louis Arch, um, gateway to the west. And there I am on the top of the St. Louis Arch uh, from a few years ago. And, um, and from there, we leave St. Louis. And we're going to the Big Chief Roadhouse for lunch, another Route 66 centerpiece, which I have a lot more information on uh, on the trip as well. And then we're going to stop at 10 minute photo walks in places like Merrimack Cavern, which is the hideout of Jesse James. Um, and the Wagon Wheel Motel, which is a, a, another famous motel. All of these have the neon signs of the 1920s and 30s. And um, and the giant rocking chair, which is there, um, which again advertises different places along the way in very clever ways, another Route 66 unique thing, um, unique, uh, unique attraction. The Munger Moss Hotel is another one, as long with the Best Western Route 66 Railhaven Hotel. And all of these have individual stories that you will learn about. And in the um, Best Western Route 66 Motel, if we're lucky, we'll get to see the room that Elvis left in. Um, ooh, wow, that sounds exciting. Um, Elvis has left the building, though. <laughs> that, um, oh, by the way, we stay at another Drury Inn that night, uh, and you have another opportunity for a kickback. That's in Springfield, Missouri. Not Illinois, Springfield, Missouri. The next day, we have our first spelunking expedition. We're going to Fantastic Caverns in Springfield, Missouri for a, a ride down below underneath seeing the stalactites and stalagmites. Um, and then we leave there and we have dinner at Iggy's Diner in Carthage, Missouri, also on Route 66, kind of like 50s food diners. And then we're going to Bonnie and Clyde. We're gonna hit all the, all the uh, Wild West murderers on this trip. We have the uh, Wild West Bonnie and Clyde's hideout in Galena. We're going to stop there. And um, continuing on day seven, um, we're going to um, Conoco's uh, fill, Allen, Allen's filling station for another stop. And all these places, as I said, have little souvenir shops. And you can see the way it was back in the 1920s. And then we're going to, well, being a Yankees fan, we're going to Mickey Mantle's hometown in Commerce, Oklahoma, which is right on Route 66, I promise. I'm lucky not you. Lucky you. you. <laughs> but it's right on Route 66, and we'll get to see his statue and his field and his boyhood home briefly. And uh, then we'll be spending the night um, in Oklahoma. The first night there. Okay, Sunday, day eight. Our bus driver is off that day. By law, has to be off every eighth day. And um, so we'll be driven down to Tulsa, Oklahoma uh, by another company. Uh, it's only a 64-mile day. See, these days are very short. We're getting on and off the bus a lot. Um, and it, it's so the days are going to fly. It, it's unbelievable. We're going to start today by going to um, Ed Galloway's Totem Pole Park on day eight. 
Uh, he he was a wood sculptor, but he created these totem poles not out of wood, but um, out of concrete and other materials. So it's really uh, awe inspiring to see that. We're going to go to the Will Rogers Memorial Museum in uh, Claremore, Oklahoma. Uh, Will Rogers, uh, the, the road is named, nicknamed the Will Rogers Highway. And um, it was it was dedicated to Will Rogers after he passed away in 1935 because he was instrumental in promoting this. Will Rogers was a very um, uh, important uh, uh philanthropist and actor and he had a lot of great little quips um that uh that are really cute that I would have liked that I wanted to share with you but I don't have them up right now let me see what I can do I don't want to take too much time um I had this set up here uh oh yeah here they are for example never slap a man who's chewing tobacco he would say Will Rogers was a character. Um, never kick a cow chip on a hot day, and they go on and on. So this is Will Rogers' Western humor. Deep. That's deep. <laughs> yeah, it is deep. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, so you'll learn more about Will Rogers and why the, the road is named in his honor. We have lunch uh, paid for by your um, your fees um, by Star uh, at that day at the Hammond House Restaurant in Claremore, Oklahoma. A delicious lunch, and then we're going to go on to my friend the Blue Whale. Um, we'll go. It's in Catoosa, Oklahoma, and uh, it was uh, moved here. It used to be a slide for kids to play on, but. Uh, in a water park, but it was moved here for all to see because it was so pretty and so colorful, and it just came, it just had a new uh, paint job. So the blue whale is looking spectacular now. Um, and then we're going to be getting into Tulsa that day, and we're going to be going to the uh, will the Woody Guthrie Center for a self guided tour. Woody Guthrie, of course, um, you know did many trips on Route 66 and wrote music. And the song, um, um, oh my goodness. Uh, oh my God, I can't, <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. He, this he, land is your <laughs> land. This land is your land, of course. He wrote, this land is your land. Thank about, you. <laughs> about Route 66, it just slipped my mind a minute. Uh, that's that's age, I think. Not Alzheimer's, I hope. <laughs> but um, I always say, if you think you have Alzheimer's, you don't. So, um, but we're going to be going to his um, museum, and that should be really a, a true enjoyment. And um, they have the original version of "This Land Is Your Land" in his own handwriting in that museum. And uh, so that's pretty much day uh, eight, and we spend the night in Tulsa. Day nine, our bus driver drives down and picks us up first thing in the morning. And um, we continue our trip down Route 66. By the way, we're uh, 16 days on Route 66 for a total of a little over 2,200 miles. So um, some days, as I, this day, we traveling day nine, we only travel 106 miles. And by the way, you're going to get all this information in my very specialized 29 page booklet that I'm known for on my cross country trip that Sandy graciously uh, allows me to run off in color at a great expense at Staples, which is all part of your, um, you'll have a, a keepsake of the trip with pictures. So all these pictures that you see in this were taken from my PowerPoint that I gave to Sandy. So the PowerPoint's pretty much finished, but we're still adding more to it. Day nine, um, we're going to stop at the uh, Circle Cinema Walk of Fame. It's a very famous um, uh, cinema theater from the 1920s. And uh, where talkies were first introduced in Tulsa and Al Josen's movie, um, 
again, I have that written down. I thought I'd remember it, but I don't. His first movie in 1927. Somebody know that? This is a trivia quiz. Quiz. Jazz that's singer. The, jazz singer. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you very much. The jazz singer. You're welcome. <laughs> was first shown. So this is connected to Hollywood. And so we'll be out there and there's a whole walk of fame out there with all the famous actors and actresses who did perform there. And then we're going to go to um, Greenwood Rising Museum, um, which is a, a magnificent museum depicting the uh, 1921 uh, race, um, race, race, um, uh, when the when uh, when Greenwood was the the blocks walls black people's Wall Street, and they were very very wealthy, and then something happened to cause the um, the jealous uh, Caucasian folks around uh, Greenwood uh, to uh, rise up against them, and they completely burned down their their village, their homes, and many people lost their lives. And this museum is dedicated to all, to the Black Wall Street folks and tells the whole story. And it's a very, very hopeful museum for the future. And um, so that's going to be a major part of day nine. Um, we're going to depart there. We have lunch at Pop Soda Ranch in Arcadia. And that's the place it has over uh 600 700 varieties of soda and i'm not going to get into the names of them because i don't want to gross anybody out at this point but there's some very unique names of soda that we all have to try you know <laughs> when in rome you have to you know do what the romans do so that's just another special lunch um we're going to the arcadia round barn which was made of wood that was actually curved by the sculptor, the sculptor who built that building, the architect. And uh, so that's a unique place. We're gonna have a tour of that. We're gonna arrive at the um, first schoolhouse in Oklahoma Territory built by um, women in 1889 to um, when they first moved on to the Oklahoma land. And then um, we're going to be going to, um, we'll finish up the day at, at o in Oklahoma City at the Alfred P. Murray Federal Building, the site of the 1995 Oklahoma City bombing, to pay our respects. Okay, day 10. Um, we have, um, again, we're going to be starting the day at the Oklahoma City Museum in Clinton. And a lot of uh, Oklahoma City Route 66 Museum there, which is another uh, top-notch museum with Route 66 artifacts. Um, we're going to have uh, lunch at the Route 66 Cafe at the market in Clinton, Oklahoma. And continuing, we're going to be going to the Conoco Tower station there um, and uh, the U Drop in Cafe for a photo op. Uh, we're going to be going to the Devil's Rope Barbed Wire Route 66 Museum as well, which has over 400 different specimens of wire. It doesn't sound that exciting, but when I spoke to the gentleman, he said, you only have an hour? That's not going to be enough time. This place <laughs> is amazing. So, you know, these, you know, you can't go, you can't judge a book by its cover. So. And by the way, this was highly suggested by Art Humac. So Art, you're getting your uh, you're getting your wish on this one, and we'll spend some time there. Um, we're going to be going to um, the Leaning Tower of of Britain. Uh, I'm sorry, Groom, Texas. It's in Groom, Texas. We're now into Texas, and they actually built it that way. And it's only leaning like ten percent but it looks like it's about to fall down. So it's pretty cool. And then we'll be, then we're um, driving into Amarillo for the night. And that night we have our dinner, which is part of your package at the big Texan steak ranch, um, the home of the 72 ounce steak that uh, people- Are you gonna try it this year, Gene? Are you gonna try to do it? 
No, I, I, I'm not. Um, I want to make it through the rest of the trip healthy. <laughs> we, we get 16 ounces, which is plenty of either steak or chicken at your, um, you know, your choice of steak or chicken, which is plenty and delicious. But somebody can try the contest, which is 72 ounces and all the fixings. If you can eat that, then you get it for free. If not, you pay a dollar an ounce or $72 for your dinner and you have to pay up front. And if you do eat it, they pay you back. So they get their money ahead of time on that one, I heard. Or they, they weren't born yesterday there. <laughs> no. But that's always a fun place to eat. And it's, and, and it's also a Route 66 museum also there. So a fun place to look around. We've been doing that every year in our cross country. So those who have been on the cross country in the past know the big Texan state range uh, very well. Okay, day 11, we're stopping off at one of the most unique artistic museums outside Cadillac Ranch. You see the picture in the upper left there. It's uh, nine Cadillacs ranging from 1946 to 1962 with uh, their fins sticking out. So they're in head first and in, in buried in the, in the earth. Um, and you can actually continue the artwork on these and, and spray paint them and put your John Hancock on them as well. Um, and then at 9.30 on day 11, we're at the Mid Midpoint Cafe in Adrian, Texas. And that is actually 1139, 1,139 miles from Chicago and 1,139 miles from Santa Monica, California, hence Midpoint Cafe. We're not eating there because it's only 930 in the morning, but we will stop there for a photo op and they have a great gift shop. I read about the great gift shop. I haven't seen it. Okay. And then... Um, also on day 11, we're going to be stopping at a few more, another motel called the Blue Swallow Motel, um, which is another Route 66 highlight. Um, and we'll be able to look around inside as well. We're going to have lunch at a place called Kicks on 66. And it's a very, uh, it's a, it's a newer restaurant. It's, it's, and uh, they have it styled for like a hundred years ago. So that should be a very nice lunch as well. And then we're gonna be in Tucumcari, New Mexico. That's where Kicks on 66 is also. And in, they have um, the convention center has the Route 66 Museum. And we booked that for uh, an hour and a half tour before we drive on this most amazing road on our way into Albuquerque. Um, it's called the Musical Road of Tijeras, T-I-J-E-R-A-S, New Mexico. Um, if, and this is gonna be, the, our bus driver is gonna be put to the test on this one because he has to drive on this musical road at exactly 45 miles an hour and we will hear the song America the Beautiful being played by the tires. So it should be pretty cool. And uh, then we go into New Mexico, uh, into Albuquerque for the night. We're going to be staying at another Drury Inn. Day 12. Um, let's see. Okay, we're doing okay here. Um, day 12, we, we're going up, up, and away on the Sandia Peak Tramway. Um, for those of you who've been up there, it's over 10,000 feet high and about 10 degrees cooler and beautiful views that uh, just are um, just awesome to see of the Sandia Peaks uh, looking into Albuquerque. We leave, yeah, okay, we leave uh, the Sandia Peak tramway and then we're going to be going to Madonna of the Trail statue to honor all the women who have traveled the Route 66 trail in the past. And we have a lot more information on what that means um, on the trip. We have lunch at Old Town Albuquerque. That's right on Route 66. 
leave there and then we're going to the chemo theater which is another one of the theaters like we had in the past that highlighted in 1926 and 27 all the first talkies that came out in the theater in um you know from hollywood and um and then we're going to be stopping at um our famous um uh, loves service plaza and that's where there's a Navajo gift shop where you can buy the Mexican blankets for five dollars. It was still five dollars last year. We still couldn't believe it. <laughs> uh, they limit people would walk out with five, ten blankets. They limited it to two blankets now, but at least they're still five dollars. So um, to to a person. And then we're gonna go to the El Rancho Hotel for another one of those iconic hotels along the route uh, in in New Mexico. And we spend the night in um, Gallup, New Mexico, before we head out the next morning to the Petrified Forest and uh, our first national park of the trip. We do have five national parks along this trip. This is the first of them. And uh, we have one national monument, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. Um, we have a complete tour of Petrified Forest and Painted Desert. And then we have lunch. We're stopping at a place called Romo's in Holbrook, Arizona, which um, it, it, we found that right along Route 66. Uh, because no place in, in the past we would have our box lunch at the beautiful Painted Desert. They have a nice little picnic area there for those of you who have been traveling with us. But there was no place in Gallup that we could find that doesn't open before 10 o'clock in the morning to deliver our box lunches. So we were stuck. Um, in the past, we had Panera, Panera, uh, Panera Bread in uh, Albuquerque that delivered. But this is Gallup, New Mexico, so we couldn't find anything. So we found a nice restaurant in Romo's Cafe. Uh, and lunch will be on your own on that day. But we did substitute another lunch in um, at a later date. Okay, so then we're going to go to the Jack Rabbit Trading Post in, jo in Joseph City, Arizona, which is cute because uh, it says, here it is. You see that sign, the Jack Rabbit Trading Post. Now, it's close to the Wigwam Trading Post, but this has a rabbit theme in instead of a Native American theme. And the Wigwam Trading Post doesn't open till four o'clock and we couldn't wait around. So we um, were going to the Jackrabbit Trading Post. And then we leave there and one of my favorite places, we're gonna be standing on the corner in Winslow, Arizona. Um, the Eagle song, of course, Take It Easy highlights that. And Winslow, Arizona really takes that song to heart and seriously. And it is a magnificent corner that we're going to go to and spend some time on and, and enter the gift shop. Last year in the cross country, we made a little side trip, which we um, and we found Winslow. We found the standing on the corner. And but we only had like a 10 minute photo op and we could not go into the gift shop. But this year I increased the time so that we can all go in and get some standing on the corner souvenirs. And then we uh, spend the night in Williams, Arizona at the Grand Canyon Railroad Railway Hotel. And that leads us to day 14, which is the Grand Canyon Railway to the mighty Grand Canyon National Park. Um, this number was two. <laughs> Sorry? number two. Yes. National park number two. Number two, yes. And this was Sandy's idea. Uh, to um, to to ride the Grand Canyon Railway, which I thought was absolutely a marvelous idea, and and they do all kinds of reenactments. Uh, you have a pre-railway show which we go to. We board the train, and then they do all kinds of reenactments throughout to keep us interested. And then we get to the Grand Canyon Village, where you can have like three hours, which includes uh, lunch and sightseeing and you could do some hiking into the canyon. 
And then uh, we take the train back to Williams. And that night, when we arrive back at Williams, we're going to have our buffet dinner. This is also part of your package at the Grand Canyon Railway Hotel. So it's a great day, day 14, as they all are. Day 15 um, brings us um, into, uh, yeah, um, let's see. Yeah, day 15 brings us out to um, the Roadkill Cafe. We're going to be riding along Route 66 into Selegman from Williams. And we're going to go to um, uh, Angel Del Delgadillo's original Route 66 gift shop. Angel is still alive. He's in his 90s right now. He was born when Roots in nineteen uh, in the nineteen twenties when Route sixty six was first starting up through Selegman, Arizona, and he um, really highlighted. He he lived his life on Route sixty six, and in nineteen eighty five when Route sixty six was decommissioned, he and he still is going to make sure that um, you know Congress keeps his Route sixty six active with funding and restoration. And he's been instrumental in restoring Route 66, not only in Selegman, but in other parts of the of Route 66 as well. So Angel um, Delgadillo is a Route 66 hero and you will get to know him better. You, His daughter um, actually runs the shop. You might get to meet her. Um, and then we're Are gonna- we we're together. Are we okay? So fifth, day fifteen is the Grand Canyon Caverns, which we want to point out um, may or may not be open. So we're we're kind of following what their situation is um, on that day, just to let everybody know. We'll keep you posted on that, and right. then we're spending that night in Kingman. Right. Exactly. So um, we're we're keeping it in there with our fingers crossed. That they, I don't know why they're closing, but they've closed through the month, through the middle of August, and we we'll, won't find out until that time what's going on with the Grand Canyon Caverns for our tour. But either way, uh, we're going to be then heading into Kingman, and we're going to be going to the Hackberry General Store, which is one of the originals that were there, and we're going to the Kingman Powerhouse Visitor Center, which is a Route 66 museum. And we're also going to be going to Locomotive Park right across the way before, as Sandy said, spending a night in Kingdom, in Kingman. And then um, you have an option that night to uh, to eat dinner at Mr. D's Route 66 Diner, an original. And as I said, it's an optional thing because if you want to take the train, I mean, the bus, the bus will be leaving. There are other options for dinner that night as well. So um, just to let you know, you it's your option. Okay, on to day 16. And um, we're going to be singing London Bridge is falling down. We're going to Lake Havasu, uh, Arizona. And yes, that's the original London Bridge that was brought over by this millionaire tycoon. And I'll tell you all the details on the day on the trip. It, it's an exciting story, but they brought it over in pieces in the, in the 1980s and and um and put it over Lake Havasu. Um, that's you see that picture to the right there. That's the top right is um is the London Bridge. And the neat thing about Lake Havasu is there's a Jimmy John's there where they are now. They, they've agreed to give us our box lunches to eat that day, which we're going to be e eating in the middle of the Mojave Desert. <laughs> and it could be well over 100 degrees, but you don't have to worry. We'll be in the shade <laughs> um, uh, that day. Um, so. After we leave the London, London Bridge, oh, by the way, that first bridge is called the Old Trail Bridge. And that's a perfect um, way to see how cars, what cars had to use in, 20, in 1926 to get across to see how narrow it is. Um, a, a so the can, top one, which is the top one is the London Bridge? And the bottom one is the old, yes. And the bottom, old, old Trail. Got it. 
And that's the original uh, Route 66 bridge that was built. And it, w- it was an engineering feat at its time. And now it's only closed to pede- pedestrians. Open. And, Since yeah. And uh, yeah. So, and then we'll be traveling through the Mojave Desert in California. So we'll be in California now. And uh, we're going to be stopping at Roy's Motel and Cafe in Amboy, California, in the Mojave Desert. They promised us um, an, a really nice shady area to eat our lunch. And they also have a shop there where they have souvenirs and lots to drink. And so that's where we're going to be eating uh, our lunch. And then we're going to be going to the Amboy Crater. It's the Amboy Crater Natural Landmark. Um, and we're going to do a short little hike to the rim. And of course, it'll all be dependent on the, you see a picture of that in the lower left there. It'll all be dependent on the heat of the day. We don't want anybody to, you know, have any kinds of problems with the heat in the desert. And and it is going to be like September 16th. So it might be really nice weather to do that. It's a short hike from where the bus lets us off up to the rim. And you can see down into the crater. Um, it at one time it it spewed lava, but it's been dormant for like twenty five hundred years. So I don't think there's anything to worry about as we look into it. And um, I'm going to be stopping at the Baghdad Cafe for a ten minute uh, photo op that's famous in many movies, and I'll tell you more about that as well. And so we're in. Um, we're now in California and it's day 17 and we're going to be going to the Bottle Tree Ranch and we're going to do a self-guided tour there. This they It was a hobby of this uh, one gentleman who uh, would hang up bottles on trees and it just caught on and he created a very colorful little site along Route 66 and of course was inspired by all the people who would travel. I failed to mention before that the the movie Pixar's Cars is very instrumental along our stretch of Route 66. I will be showing the movie on the bus because many of the places that we go to have um, is where Cars was filmed or they got the idea to film to uh, in the movie to base it out of places on Route 66. So I will be showing you that and um, as well. Okay, and we'll be seeing another Route 66 museum here in Victor's in Victorville, California, before we move on to the original site of McDonald's. We'll be going through the muse- through, through the museum. The original McDonald's was torn down in the 1970s and um, you know, but we there's now a, a museum there that we're going to be seeing in San Bernardino, California. We're also having lunch at Juan Polo's. It's a buffet lunch, and that's also part of your package paid for by Star. We just substituted that lunch for that box lunch that we couldn't do at a Gallup, New Mexico. And then we're going, then we, oh, that night for oh. dinner, you voice again. If you want to go to the um, the City Walk, Universal St- Studio City Walk in California, in Burbank, uh, it'll be an option. The bus will drive us there and pick us up later. They have lots of restaurants. And the nice thing about this, it's on a Tuesday, and it will not have a lot of kids. In the past, it's always been on a Friday, the opening day of the Universal, Universal Studios Fright Fest which garnered 10,000 young kids, if you remember, those of you who have been with me on other cross-country trips. So this time it's going to be on a Tuesday, and hopefully we'll be able to get the restaurant of our choice without having to wait in line or put our names on a list. But that should be nice for uh, Tuesday, September 17th. Then on the 18th, day 18, the September 18th, um, we have our tour of Los Angeles. I've already been in touch with our great tour guide who's been with me for many years and we're, we're good friends. And 
So we agreed last year that we were not going to the farmer's market for lunch. We're going to the Santa Monica Pier, the end of Route 66. We'll be taking all of our end of the route. We made it pictures. And then you'll have an opportunity to eat lunch on the pier on route, in Santa Monica, California. And for the first time in STARS history of cross-country trips, you'll have the opportunity to dip your feet into the Pacific Ocean if you choose to do that. I'm going to definitely do that. Um, and uh, so uh, the, the tour will include the, uh, the TCL Chinese Theater, uh, better known as Grumman's Chinese Theater, the Walk of Fame, the Dolby Theater, um, the Beverly Hills sign, Ringo's Peace sign we're going to see. Um, and then, as I said, we get into Santa Monica. And then we're going to we're going to um, do the Will Rogers Museum, which is there also um, that honors the great Will Rogers again. Finish it off with the La Brea Tar Pits tour. And uh, it's going to be a fantastic tour of L.A. Very different from anything we've ever done before. But of course, being a Beatles fan, I had to keep in the Ringo peace sign. So, you know, sorry about that. See, I, <laughs> and all, I helped, I helped write this thing. So that's all. <laughs> and yeah. day 19, we, we turn the bus around and we start heading home. We're off of 66. Yes. And how do you get, and my thought was, how do you get home in like eight days? And the thing is, we decided to take the southern route home this time. It'll be warmer, and um, I, I think I think it'll be a really great trip. We're going to go to Joshua Tree National Park, which another is another national also, park. Yeah, another one, and uh, for a tour, and then we're going to be driving all the way into Tucson, Arizona. It's a long day of travel, but we will be stopping at Joshua Tree, and we'll be stopping in a nice place for lunch. And we'll be going to um, Tucson, Arizona. Tucson is very, very famous for its swarrows. Swarrow cactus, you see a picture of that in the lower left. Um, we're going to be going, our first stop on day 20, Friday in Tucson, um, is we're going to the Swarrow National Park. Now, the bus can have those the roads are dirt roads in Swarrow, and they're too narrow anyway for the bus. And so we'll be parking in the visitor center, but I've been told that within a 45 minutes, you can easily do a little loop, which is less than a half a mile and take all the Swarrow pictures your heart desires. And that's what's great about Swarrow National Park. Um, my sister-in-law, my brother and sister-in-law live in um, Tucson. They're gonna be joining us uh, for a large part of that day. And they're real excited. And my sister-in-law always says, the swallows wave at you. So you have to wave back at the swallows. They all have those arms. Um, so we'll be going to the, De the Sonorian Desert Museum, which is a highlight of Tucson. We'll be eating lunch there as well on your own. And then we'll go back to the hotel, freshen up. And we're going to be going to the Gaslight Theater that night. But first we go to dinner at Little Anthony's, which is also going to be uh, paid by Star. We're going to go then to the, uh, the the show at the Gaslight Theater, which is called Shriek. The show is a parody on Shrek. Uh, so I will be showing Shrek on board so that we're, um, you know, we're familiar with that, with the movie or re-familiarize ourselves with the movie. And the Gaslight is an adorable theater and they do lots of parodies and they're funny and it's comical and um, it, you should all enjoy that show. It should be fantastic. We leave Tucson on day 21 and um, we travel um, into to Alamogordo, New Mexico, which is where White Sands National Park is located. So that's another one of our national parks. And we'll be doing a, an eight mile tour. It's a circular tour of uh, White Sands. And you'll be able to get out. Driving, and driving, driving. Drive. Yes, an eight mile drive. 
We're going to stop along the way so you can go out and do your snow angels in the white sands. So it should be really, um, it's a beautiful park. It's, I'd say it's very colorful, but I don't <laughs> want to go and uh, that night we'll be staying in Alamogordo, New Mexico, day 22, where um, we're heading, we're going to be driving through uh, the Sacramento Mountains, about 8,700 feet in elevation. And we'll be um, going from New Mexico into Texas, and we'll be stopping at uh, Abilene, Texas for the night. Uh, Texas is so huge, and we need two days to get through it because we're going through I-10, which is and into I-20, which is the um, the long way through Texas. Day twenty-three, uh, by lunchtime, we'll be in Fort Worth. So Fort Worth, which is near Dallas, and I chose Fort Worth. I did the uh, fifteen-day Texas trip a few years ago. And my favorite spot along the way was Fort Worth, and they have the uh, they have the Longhorn Cattle Drive, which you see in the lower right corner along Exchange Avenue. And we'll also be having lunch, which is paid by Star, part of your trip at Cooper's Barbecue. And it doesn't get better than Cooper's Barbecue if you want real Texas barbecue. So that's going to be a lunch. That's going to be a day where. Um, in fact, I bought my cowboy hat in Fort Worth on Exchange Street, and I'll be sure to be wearing that throughout that whole day, if not before. So, um, okay, so then um, day 24, we're getting there. Um, we're actually driving all the way to Memphis, and we um, we stop at the Lorraine hotel before going to our hotel it's also the motel it's also a hotel both are correct um and that's the spot we're going to pay our respects to dr martin luther king who was um shot on the balcony in the memorial to the Lor at the lorraine motel it's absolutely beautiful and you'll be able to learn the story of that fateful day in 1968 i believe it was april 4th i might be off a day uh, 1968 when he was shot. So we'll be paying our respects to Dr. King. And then that night, you'll have your choice of going to dinner on Beale Street, famous uh, street um, in Memphis, Great Street, and uh, or other restaurants as well. On day 25, we dedicate day 25 to Elvis. Day 25 is all Graceland, and uh, well, the first half of the day is all Graceland. We'll be going, um, we'll be uh, doing the entire tour and going through the museum. And then we'll be spending, we'll be driving to Nashville where we'll have our farewell dinner in uh, Paula Dean's restaurant in Nashville across from the Grand Old Opry. But we're not going in the Grand Old Opry, but not on this trip, but. Um, a week later, I'm going to the Grand Old Opry on my Memphis <laughs> trip. That's another story. That's another trip. But um, anyway, um, but we'll have our, our farewell dinner at Paula Dean's. We leave there and we head towards Sevierville, Tennessee. We will be on day 26. We will stop for lunch and shopping at the Applewood Farmhouse Restaurant, again paid for by Star. And that night we'll be spending the night in Virginia. And then day 27, we're on our way home and we sleep on our own bed. <laughs> and that's the trip. Amazing. It sounds awesome. It sounds, I, I put together this slide of fun facts. Actually, Gene and I put together this slide of fun facts. 23 different hotels, 88 total attractions, of which 79 of them are along Route 66, five national parks, one national landmark, at least 17 museums, maybe more, we'll see how the days go, and then six different Drury Inns with kickbacks. So, um, oh my God, this, this trip has um, everything in it. Um, it's super exciting because it does focus on Route 66, which is just true Americana at its best, 
but it also has some great national parks, um, lots of different bucket list items for you. So um, thank you so much, Jean, for taking us through um, that 27 day itinerary. Um, it's, you know, you know it so well, um, you talk about it with such excitement. It, it's just um, fantastic to hear. Um, I'd like to add that each, each place we go, you can expect to hear the history of the place along the trip and the movies are going to be all geared to the trip, which will be amazing. And what about the music? Great music. Oh, <laughs> music. oh my God. I already have my playlist and I keep adding <laughs> to it. Oh, thank you for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Thank you, um, <laughs> do, do, um, do any of you uh, cross country veterans um, want to, um, I don't want to give you longer than like 30 seconds because I know you could go longer and it's starting to get a little bit late, but any cross country veterans want to share some quick feedback? Yes, I do. Al Unkenheimer here. Uh, looks like you guys, Sandy, you and Gene, you guys put together another great trip. Last year's trip was unbelievable. It was the trip of a lifetime. It was now I marked it off my bucket list, but I'd like to go again with you guys this year, but I'll be across in, in uh, England, the Britain sampler with you guys. <laughs> so, but it was an unbelievable trip you guys did. Unbelievable. Awesome. Awesome. I, I, believe, recommend, I recommend it highly. Thank you. Danny, we'll be doing this trip again in years to come. Yes, we are. Absolutely. We are. Yeah. So if you miss it, in 2024, you'll be able to get it again. Um, 2026, if I'm right, Gene, is the yeah. 100th anniversary of Route 66. So it is our plan to do this again in 2026. In 2025, we'll probably do, well, we're planning to do um, the cross country route that Al took and a lot of you um, took in the past six, uh, five years. Um, and then 2026, we'll do Route 66. So we're kind of going to alternate for a few years. Um, and I have to make a comment of the what Gene keeps saying is the meals paid by Star. Now, you all know that you actually paid for the meals, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's in your package. I mean, it is like we're writing the check, but don't, Gene's like making us sound like we're, you know, al so altruistic. I mean, we are nice people and everything, but at the end of the day, you're really paying for the meals. <laughs> Such a deal. <laughs> so um, you can, I mean, of course, I mean, let's talk about the price for a second. Um, there's no doubt that this is an absolutely um, expensive tour. Uh, you, you, you can't argue with that. However, I think those of you that have taken this trip will agree with me that what you get for the price is, uh, it's, it's uncomparable. It's, it's priceless. Um, the memories, um, the experiences, of course, the, the, bucket list list items and the national parks um the the photos that will stay with you the friends how about the friends that you make um gene has a group is it the 2021 group yes gene, that one cross country friends yeah they we yeah, meet that get together regularly yeah. for brunch and um you know these it's not just 27 days of your life that's not what it is this is an experience to literally last a lifetime absolutely Anybody else that's a cross-country veteran that wants to chime in with a little bit of feedback? I know you're not shy. <laughs> Carol says that Gene does a great job with the music, uh, the trip brochure, the, the paperwork that he puts together, coordinating the movies, et cetera. Yes, it is Gene's labor of love. You can't even call labor because he doesn't consider it labor. Um, he, he just, he loves every second of it. Um, if you guys think of something and want to chime in later, um, just yell. There's been a couple questions um, that I wrote down from the chat that I want to ask. And then I, I'm sure some of you have some questions and then I want to show you a couple more things. Um, there was a question, what time do you depart the hotel most mornings? Yeah, I can. Um, that uh, it varies. Some days are, most days are between 8 and 8.30. Uh, departing the hotel. Some days are nine and some days are seven, seven fifteen. 
But um, on, on long travel days, we need to leave, especially that one day that we're going from L.A. to Tucson, where we stop at Joshua Tree National Park. That day's in the earliest day of the trip, um, simply because it's the longest it's the longest riding day and we want to get to Tucson so that you have dinner at an appropriate hour. Yeah. So probably on average eight to eight 30. Yeah. Um, and then there was, of course, this question always comes up, which will lead me into the next few slides, but talk to us about laundry, Jean. Okay. Um, all the hotels that we go to, and I say all this time because I mean all, um, last time, uh, Las Vegas did not have laundry services unless you, know, you actually paid for the actual people to take do your laundry for you. Um, each hotel has uh, between one to three washers and dryers. And and we time it so that when we if you time it at an off time every every couple of days, uh, there's really no problem doing laundry. Um, you can I always say do it on the off hour. So do it as soon as we arrive or um, do it after nine o'clock at night or do it five, six o'clock in the morning. So where when you don't expect others. However, I've also got to say that many people do it during the kickbacks or at the jury, for example, the jury ends and they have their drinks and boy, are they partying. And in a few situations, the hotel people have to come over the manager and says, would you please quiet down? You're making too much. It's just a party. So um, the laundry, laundromat, I always say pack for like a week to, to nine days. Um, and then like, so every week you can, um, you know, do a laundry every eighth day or whatever. So it's not so burdensome or stagger it every five days so that it's not so burdensome. Yeah. Um, and, and the feedback that we've gotten from travelers is laundry is not a big deal. Um, it's something that you worry about and think about before the trip, but once you're on the trip, um, it's, you just work it out and it's no big deal. And, um, I have some slides here with packing tips. Um, if you want to take photos or screenshots of these slides, or, um, again, you can come back and watch this later. Um, but these are some tips that will be helpful for you. Um, we also have um, this in a blog on our website. So, um, you know, we want you to keep the weight of your suitcase to 40 pounds um, because A, it will build over time and our driver has to be responsible for taking that suitcase out and putting it back in virtually every day. And the driver has um, lots to do and we don't, we don't want them to over exert themselves. Um, so we ask you to keep that to 40 pounds. Um, you will have a washer and dryer, like Jean said, at every hotel, this slide says some of your hotels, but we do think it's every hotel. Um, let's see, I have more packing tips. Um, you know, talks about, you know, rolling your clothes and if you're going to donate some clothes, maybe bring those and then, you know, toss them, um, after, after you're wearing them. So you don't have to wash them. And again, you'll fill your suitcase with things you buy. Um, and well, yeah, that, you can just add what uh, many people do is along the way, or you can even take us, you know, one of those fold up, fold away suitcases that, don't take up much room and put it into the uh, bin, upper bin of the uh, bus, the upper compartment. And uh, people with their souvenirs and other things fill up additional bags. And there's always a spot in the back somewhere on the floor or on the seat in the back of the bus where, where people aren't sitting that you can always, that we always find room for you or someplace under the bus. So that keep that suitcase at 40 pounds or less you know, and, and I have a little machine, a little thing that measures the weight. So if it gets too heavy, we're going to ask you anyway to, to remove it, remove some items so that we don't want our bus driver injured. That's the last thing that we could do. Exactly. Exactly. And a bus driver that does the entire trip, just like one tour director. So yeah, one bus driver, one tour director, we have to keep you guys healthy and safe. Um, so I think there are four slides on packing tips. Um, tips here. So hopefully you got photos or screenshots, or you certainly can come back um, to look at these. Um, and Jane yeah. and Sandy. Yes. This is Barbara and Art Humack. 
Hi. I just wanted to alert you guys that on the trip, we will be using our real names. My brother Art is actually Todd Styles, and I am Buzz Murdoch. <laughs> I see you guys are totally into this. Oh, yes. <laughs> I can't. You're asking me to remember more names? Thank you very Just much. Just make extra name tags. <laughs> Just, um, yeah, put that on Jean's to-do list. No problem. I just realized I wasn't sharing those packing tips um, with you. So I've just posted them here. Um, if you do want to take pictures, I thought I was sharing my screen and I certainly wasn't. So um uh, there we go. So uh, there's four four screens of packing tips. Um, the one that starts with the weight, then um, the rolling your clothes, uh, the bring a swimsuit, <laughs> and some snacks, etc. Um, but we'll be, you know, um, we stop. You'll stop at Walmart's on the way. Um, there'll be plenty of places to buy things along the way. So, um, uh, so don't worry about it. Um, so yes, one bus driver, and then that bus driver has three days off within the trip. So that, um, those days off are all built into the itinerary. Um, we have 29 people, um, booked on this trip so far. Um, we hope to have 45, um, that'd be great. Um, so we're just about a little bit more than halfway there. Um, there's a question, are we limited to one suitcase? You are, you are limited to one suitcase. Um, we do understand that you will buy things along the way. Um, I greet the bus when you come back. So I've seen the one suitcase expands to usually two or lots of schlepper bags. Um, but yes, you will start with one suitcase. Absolutely. One 40 pound maximum suitcase. Yeah, absolutely. Andy and Jean? Yes. Yeah. This is uh, Barbara a.k.a. Uh, Buzz Murdoch again. <laughs> In 2017 cross country, the best piece of advice that Jean gave was that no one is going to be looking at you thinking and saying that person's been wearing the same outfit for three days. Yep, you're right. No one, because most people are going to be. <laughs> yeah, you guys are there to have fun. You're not yep. there to worry about what you look like. Absolutely. You're there to have memories. Um, you know, you'll bring things that mix and match with other things. Um, and it, it's really not a big deal. And please, um, if you're splurging on the cross country trip, um, splurge on your suitcase too. You want a newer style suitcase with wheels. Again, that makes it easier for everybody. And, you know, every so often we'll, you know, we'll, we, we arrange for baggage handling along the way and, you know, you get somewhere and the baggage handlers are delayed or they, they don't show up. Who knows? You want that suitcase on wheels. Um, it just makes it easier for everybody. So splurge. I, I shouldn't even say splurge. You can go to TJ Maxx or, or Ross's or Marshall's and get a lovely new style suitcase for about a hundred, hundred and ten dollars. Um, it is worth it. Absolutely and, worth and it. And they need to have the wheels that the four wheels that circulate in all directions. They're yes, very they're called spinner wheels. Spin wheels, right. So you want a bag, um, you want a bag with spinner wheels, like 24 inches, maybe 26 inches tops, uh, spinner wheels. Absolutely. Um, let's talk about tour protection. Um we, if you do book this trip, we do highly recommend that you um, purchase tour protection. This protects the investment of your trip um, so that if you do have to cancel, you will get all of your money back. No questions asked. Okay. We know you want to go um, and we know you have every intention to go, uh, but this is a 27 day trip and we do know things come up for whatever reason, whether it's your health, someone else's health, health, an event that you just can't miss. Um, let's say you're on day 14 of the trip and God forbid something happens and you need to leave the trip. If you have tour protection, you will get refunded for the portion of the trip that you don't take. So day, if you leave the tour on day 14, from day 15 to day 27, you will get the refund for the unused portion of your trip. So we highly recommend tour protection. 
Um, if you are a cross-country traveler, or if you are interested and hope to be, whether you're booked or not, we invite you to uh, join us um, in our special private Facebook group. Um, you can go to Facebook and search Stars Cross Country Travelers. Um, again, you'll have to answer some questions because we do keep it private. Um, and once you're in that group, you can see the basic packing. We, we keep um, files in there that will be helpful for you. A basic packing list, uh, cross country packing tips. Um, you can see photos, um, possibly find a roommate. Let's say you want to go and you can't afford to travel as a single or a solo traveler. Um, you can post in this Facebook group that you're looking to find a roommate. Um, so there's lots and lots of great um, communication uh, going on in these in this Facebook group. So um, we would definitely want you to join that. Uh, Sandy, also yes. I want to know that in July, like the second week of July, I'll be sending uh, an email or you'll be sent, I'll be writing up a letter to each person who's going on the trip with lots of details, um, including packing hints and other things that they need to be aware of. And that will go out and you'll be sending it out to all the uh, cross country travelers for 2024. Yes, that's exactly right. We will send you an email with a few things that you need to start thinking about before you go. Again, I thought I was sharing my screen. Um, this is how you can find us on Facebook, the Stars Cross Country Travelers. Um, and there are two ways to book your trip. Um, you can call and talk to Sandy or Samantha. This Sandy is the other Sandy. Um, although you never know, I might answer the phone. Um, crazier things have happened and, uh, or you can book it online and we, um, and we would love for you to do that. Um, I'm, I'm not ready to talk about what's happening yet. Um, does anybody have any more questions about, um, cr the cross country, whether it's, um, the itinerary or experiences, or you want to share something for the good of the group? You guys are the best. You guys are great. Um, that means we covered it all. So um, a bit of housekeeping here. Uh, let's see. Our next tour Tuesday is May 7th. Um, we will be talking about riding the rails of Maryland and West Virginia, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright and Flight 93 and some solo travelers experiences. So we're um, extremely excited for our May 7th Tour Tuesday and we're getting ready for that. Um, for those of you that are solo travelers, we do have a Facebook group um, just for you, just for our solo travelers. Uh, again, I it's like, I don't, I apologize. I don't know why it's not sharing as quickly as it used to. Um, so star solo travelers join our Facebook group. Um, or the stars cross country travelers uh, that I've already mentioned. Um, and I asked you if you want to have, if you have any questions. And at the end of um, a tour Tuesday, you know, I always pick a winner. This person will get a $35 uh, star gift certificate to use um, towards any um, upcoming trip um, that they've already booked or haven't booked yet. And our winner for tonight is Sharon Ewing. Sharon, congratulations. Are you still on the call? Let's see. Uh, I, I see your name. I see your name. Congratulations, Sharon. So when you call to book your next trip, you will uh, get $25 um, off of that trip. So congratulations for that. And um, Jean, I can't thank you enough um, for, for taking us through this. Let's, let's all give Gina a hand oh, for so you. many reasons, right? <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Great job, Gene. Great um, job. You, you have, you. you know, six cross countries under your belt, uh, seventh on the way. Um, obviously cross country is just part of what you do. Um, for us, you do wonderful on so many other trips. Like we've talked about Ark Encounter, uh, Memphis and Nashville, Flight 93. Um, I know you love Broadway. Um, so um, we just appreciate all that you do. Um, and we're so thankful. And I, I as the owner of the company, um, when I put uh, 40 to 50 people on a bus um, and Gene is in charge, 
I can go to sleep at night um, soundly because I know Gene, he's got it. He's got it. He is giving you guys the best possible experience that you could possibly have. Um, you are in the best hands with Gene. Um, of course, our driver um, and Gene will work as a, in a partnership to make sure that the trip goes smoothly. We don't know who the driver is going to be for this year yet. Um, they kind of fight over it because they a lot of them want to do it. So we'll kind of get we'll figure it out as we get closer. Um, but Jean will be escorting that trip. And those of you that are booked on it, I know you'll have a wonderful time. Those are you, those of you that are thinking about going, um, please join us. We would love to have you. Jean would love to make you a part of his cross country family. Am I right, Jean? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So um, thank you so much. Uh, for joining us. I'll see you on May 7th, hopefully, at our next Tour Tuesday. Um, and maybe I'll see you on a cross-country trip in the future. I'll be at the I'll be at the May 7th one also. I think I'm doing the riding the rails. All I right. Know. You'll see if you want to see Gene again, join us on May 7th. So thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful night. Thank you Bye. so much thank for you. coming. Thank you for your time. Thank you for traveling with us. And thank you for supporting us. Bye. Oh, thank you. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you oh, so much. glad. You can find this. We'll put it on the Tour Tuesday library. So if you came late, you'll be able to see the beginning or you can share it with friends, et cetera. We, we're so happy that you came. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so Great. much. Bye. You did a bye -bye. wonderful job. <laughs> You're yes, welcome. Yes, You're excellent welcome. Work. Excellent. <laughs> Okay, bye-bye. Gene did it all. <laughs> and thank you to the Humax, to Barb and Art. I mean, what You're are welcome, you doing? Yeah, bye, guys. <laughs> bye, everybody. Never heard of